Hi there, we're over at the Gigabyte booth and we're going to be taking a look at some Z77 motherboards and Stu's here to introduce some of the motherboards to us. Hi, how you doing? Um, yeah, right, well, these, these four here are, are high-end Z77 uh, motherboards which will be released shortly, I can't say exactly when, but of course they're supporting the new 22 nanometer forthcoming third generation Intel core uh, CPUs, which again will be out shortly. Um, this, this is the top of the range SKU, this is the G1 Sniper 3, which of course follows on our G1 Killer series, which is aimed directly at gamers. So, as with previous uh, G1 Killer boards, we have an onboard creative sound chip. In this case, it's the new 3D sound core uh, from Creative, which also has the Japanese Nichicon uh, capacitors and a little IM shield here to stop the uh, magnetic interference. Uh, you've also got uh, Bigfoot Killer LAN and also Inter uh, Intel uh, Gigabit Ethernet. So you've got two uh, high-powered Ethernet uh, connectors that you so you can basically connect one for your dedicated for your gaming and another maybe for uh, for your downloads or whatever. Um, underneath here we've got a PLX chip, which is smaller than previous generations. As you'll see, it's quite it's quite tidy, and this basically turns the Z77. PCI Express from 16 lanes into 32 lanes. Okay. So you can have two, two graphics cards at times 16. Of course, it's all Gen 3, I should add. Yeah. And of course, you can have four Crossfire X uh, times 8 and three SLI. Um, oh, in terms of, um, you know, you've got a high-end board here. Is there any sort of uh, possibility for a micro ATX? There is a micro ATX board. We're not showing it today. It's a similar, similar kind of design. It's got the same kind of uh, look and feel. It's got the onboard sound, but uh, unfortunately, it's in transit. So maybe if you come back tomorrow, I'll be able to give yeah, you. Yeah, we'll, we'll do that. Definitely. Yeah, that'd be nice. Yeah. Because we think actually for gamers, you you, you might want to build a rig that's a bit more portable. So yeah. micro ATX sure. goes in a smaller chassis, so you can take it to your mate's house and. Yeah bring on your old LAN parties or whatever, so we think there's a, uh, an important market there. there is, yeah, yeah. Uh, moving down, this is a UD5, so this would be also good for overclocking, also good for gaming, I guess, but it's, uh, it's, the high, it's another high-end SKU. Uh, it, you might notice that here we've got MSATA, and here also MSATA. In fact, what, what we've done for the first time, with, we're the only motherboard manufacturer really that's offering MSATA and all the full-size ATX boards. Micro ATX, there just isn't the real estate to physically put it on the board, but all the seven series, if it's micro, if it's full ATX, it'll have an MSATA port on there, which of course means you can install a small MSATA SSD, which is ideal for Intel Smart Response technology. And of course, there's also Intel Rapid Start technology and Intel Smart Connect, which you can also configure for your SSD to speed your system up uh, from from a deep sleep state. It can it can wake up much faster, and of course, it'll speed your overall responsiveness for responsiveness for applications as well, right? Which we, we saw with Z78, and it was quite successful, quite popular, so we put it on all the ATX boards this time. Um, you'll also notice on these top three boards, this one here's the UD3H, we've put uh, power on switches, also a debug switch, CMOS and reset there, as well as PowerPoint uh, read points for people who want to want to crank up the LN2 and get serious with the overclocking. As well as, on each of these, you also have what we call OCPEG, which is basically overclocking PCI Express graphics, so that you can add additional power for your graphics array via a SATA rail. Which is quite because I mean usually when you build a rig you have a few starter rails yeah, going sure. spare so yeah. that'll basically keep your stability when you're running three or four car configurations. And is that something that uh, is exclusive to Gigabyte or is that something that uh, other vendors offer as well? Other vendors do it, but they quite often they they they're, they're quite often not using the starter rail. They they have other ways of doing it. But I, I think this is handy, like because like I said, quite often these power supplies you have quite a, quite a lot of starter connectors yeah, yeah. spare so. If you go with spare, it, it just kind of makes sense, I guess, to uh, use that to bump up the power to the graphics. What's this, uh, this one down here? The one That's at the bottom? A, this one at the bottom is a D3H, which would be a more affordable, but still a uh, nice black PCB. And similar, it doesn't have the overclocking features, but it's still a, a very, uh, very attractive, it'll be an attractive, a more attractive price point for some people. Yeah. Yeah. Not exactly entry level, more, more mid-range. I guess the, the other important thing is that all of these boards are using our new uh, digital power delivery system. Yeah. So we've got four separate controllers, each of them are digital controllers. Yeah. This, most of our competitors are not using digital in this way at all. And it's giving you more control over how you uh, basically apply the phase, power and uh, current 
uh, voltage rather, voltage and current to your motherboard. And we, so there's four controllers, one for the CPU itself, one for the VTT, which if you like is what used to be FSB yeah. in the old days, uh, one also for the integrated graphics and also one for the uh, memory. So users, if you want to open all the doors in terms of overclocking and really boost your system, there's a lot that you can play with in there now that it's digital and you can do it in real time as well. Previously, that stuff was, uh, was analog. A lot of that digital stuff first appeared on our X79 series. We've now uh, moved it onto the, or will be, on the Z77 7 series boards. Okay. We're also, uh, shortly we'll be launching Ultra Durable 4, because Gigabyte's always been known for its yeah, Ultra Durable it's cool. slogan. And 4 is the next level, so we're adding uh, uh, basically power surge protection, so that if you experience a surge in power, then you won't blow any serious components. We've also added a uh, special kind of mesh technology within the PCB, which helps it protect from uh, humidity, humidity am among other things. So, yeah, I mean, it's, it's, the, it's, a, it's the same story, but it's even more so. It's yeah. gigabytes. We're not just ultra durable, we're more ultra durable than ever. Yeah. Yeah? But I think from a DIY perspective, durability has got to be a big priority, yeah. right? You want to build a rig, you want it to last, and you want it to last for a long time, right? You want it to be stable. I think that pretty much covered. Oh, and of course, we've got a new version of 3D BIOS. So 3D BIOS is, uh, I don't know if you've used it before, it's a more graphical interface. It's maybe not for the high-end users and the overclockers, extreme guys will still go to advanced mode and use the keyboard to quickly configure things. But 3D BIOS is, it's going to show you what parts of the board visually do what and maybe give you a little bit of advice about what you can do with the BIOS. So it's, uh, it's, our, it's based on our new dual UEFI technology. Okay. Well, thanks very much, Stu. Uh, obviously, over the next couple of days, or probably tomorrow actually, we'll uh, take a look at that Micro ATX, get an exclusive look at that. So uh, we'll see you soon.